All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fresh Fire Friday. I'm so glad to see you and be with you this morning. Uh, thank God for you. Uh, pray that uh, you are having a blessed day. Pray that God is um, blessing you in ways that you never even imagined. Y'all give me a minute here. Let me get my stuff together um, so that I will be able, good morning, Kawana, so that I'll be able to um, to like and share my own video here this morning. Uh, there we go. Okay. Maybe not. There we go. Sorry I'm running a few minutes late, but sometimes things happen. And uh, and so they happen. So uh, thank y'all for joining us. Thank you for coming back in here. Uh, go ahead and like and share the video. I'm actually trying to do that myself. If I could ever get this stuff to load the way it's supposed to load. Good morning, Tanja. Good morning to you. Um, pray that y'all y'all's morning is starting out good. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sherman May. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank y'all for joining us here this morning. Thank y'all for joining us here uh, this morning. Um, let me see. Let me see. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm going to finish on time. Give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, good morning, Kiki. I can see people coming in, but uh, y'all give me a minute. Give me a second. And uh, let me see if I can get this thing right here. Uh, I love technology and technology loves me. I love technology and technology loves me. Good morning, Tracy. Um, so it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, all right. There we go. Finally got some things working, I think. Yes. All right. Here we go. Come on. Let's get started. Good morning to everybody. Once again, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I pray that you will have uh, an amazing day today and that things will go according to uh, God's plan and purpose for your life today. Now, this morning, very simply, very simply, I want to talk to you this morning about your purpose. I want to talk to you this morning about purpose. Uh, and, and I want I want to talk to you in this way. Uh, Y'all know how much how much we're always searching for our purpose and how we we always want. We we always good morning, Carla. We always uh, are wanting to find out what's my purpose in life. Why? Why am I here? What's my purpose? And and and, and we. We, we fight and we strive to try and find out uh, what our purpose is in life. But have you ever thought about you come to those moments in life where God really shows you your purpose and then you don't really want to know what your purpose is anymore? Like like God shows you your purpose. Y'all remember Jesus. Y all, y all, I, I hope y'all remember. I hope y'all remember Jesus. Y'all remember Jesus um, when, uh, when, uh, when he was faced with, uh, with, with the very reason why he had came here. Go to Luke chapter number 22, verse 39 through 46. Luke 22, 39 through 46. I, I wrote this down. There, there comes a point in time when, in your life when you're facing something that's difficult, but it's necessary. You're facing something that's difficult, but it is also necessary. Like, like you're facing something that you really don't want to do, but it's necessary. And so, so Luke 22, 39 through 46, and then we're going to get through this. It says, uh, and it came and he came out and went as he, as he went to the Mount of Olives and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at, when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that you enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about the stones cast and kneeled down and prayed saying, father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. How many times has God revealed something to you, your purpose, what you're supposed to be doing, or revealed something to you, and, and you were just like, you know, come on, God, let, let this thing pass from me. If if Jesus had, had his, his purpose was to come, and that cup was his, and, and that cup wasn't going to go anywhere, and for thank God, uh, thank God, you and I should thank God that that cup didn't pass from him. But here's what Jesus said, and here, here are some of the things that you've got to get to in your life. It's not my will, Father. Nevertheless, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Not my will, Father, but let your will be done. 
And here's the problem with that sometimes is that we really just don't want to do what God wants us to do. Come on, let's be honest. We just, that, this thing seems like it is so difficult for us that, that we, we won't do it. And what happens is that, listen, if Jesus had not accepted his cup, think about it, you and I would never have had an opportunity to be saved. You and I would never be where we are right now. And so he said, not my will, but thine will be done because there were things that there, there are things in your life that other people's futures hinge upon you doing what you need to do. It's difficult, but it's necessary. It's difficult, but it's necessary. And if you don't do it, there are people that are coming behind you that are going to be set back and messed up. They're going to experience things that they should not be experiencing simply because you wouldn't make the necessary changes or you wouldn't do what you needed to do. But I'm telling y'all, it's something that we always say, Father, you know, Lord, show me what I'm supposed to be doing. And then when God reveals it to us, man, we'd be like, you know, show me something else, God. This ain't really, this ain't really it. Show me something, show me something different. Show me something different. I'm going to read verse 43. Hang in there. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven and strengthening st heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from, from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Y'all remember early on, he told them, he said, he said, why don't y'all pray? No, he said, pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Now watch this. There, there are some things that you're facing that you want everybody else to go through it with you. But in the end, you'll find out that you're the only one that can do it. And your fellows, your your your, your people that, that are supposed to be there with you, uh, that are supposed to be, you think, you know, if, if I have them, I won't be going through this by myself, but you will. You will. I was. I, I. I love watching. There's this show that comes on the History Channel called Alone, and, and I gotta finish watching that. It was the finale last night, and so don't nobody tell me who won. But but there was this one lady, and you knew eventually that that she was gonna give in because her emotions started to get to her. It wasn't the fact that that you know they all you know get a little hungry and starve a little bit, but it wasn't just that. And and her father before she left told her. Even though you're out there by yourself, you're never alone. But she came to this realization. She said, I, I forget, Father, she said, forgive me. She said, but I feel all alone. Although I know that you guys are back there supporting me, you're not here with me. And so it makes this thing that I have to do very difficult because you're not here. It's a hundred day challenge. They had to stay out there for a hundred days. She was on day like number 75. 25 more days for a million dollars and she couldn't do it because she felt alone. And, and there are other contestants who are going through the same thing, same things who found ways to adapt so that they may be able to stay. They're going through the same hardships. And I'm trying to speak to somebody today and tell them you can't, you can't be so concerned about what everybody else is doing that you lose focus of your purpose or what you're supposed to be doing. And if it was everybody else's journey, they'll be there with you. If it's not their journey, they won't take this journey with you. Don't be mad at them because they don't take this journey with you. It is your journey. And you can't give up on the thing that God has given you to do. And because everybody else ain't doing what there's, what you think that they're supposed to be doing. There's some people that are not are supposed to go to certain places with you because it will hinder you from fulfilling your purpose in life. And so here, here was Jesus' disciples. Now he had told them, look, if y'all don't pray, you know, temptation is going to enter in. Their temptation was that they fell asleep when they should have been praying. They fell asleep when they should have been praying. But it never stopped Jesus from doing what he came there to do. And I'm saying to you, don't let these things in life prevent you and stop you and hinder you from doing what you're supposed to do because everybody else ain't doing what you think they should be doing. And that there's a point in time, there comes a point in time when you, when you may have to separate yourself and you may have to be alone and you may have to go through this, you may have to face this challenge and you may have to do this stuff. But no. That in the end, God's going to get glory out of your life and out of that situation. 
When he arose and prayed, he came to the disciples, found them sleeping in sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep you? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, multitude came. That's when Judas them came uh, to take him. He was telling them, get up, get up, stop sleeping. And, and can I tell some of y'all, I mean, you, you, it's, 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 it's far time that, that you, that you get up. I'm, I, and I, and I got to say it to you like this right here. I'm not talking about physical sleep, but it's time for you to get up and take control of your life. It's time for you to get up and to carry out your purpose in life. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to wake up from that slumber and that sleep. It's time for you to rise. It's time for you to get up because I'm telling you right now, there are things that are coming after you and you need to be awake. You need to be fully alert. You need to be prepared. You need to be ready. Your faith needs to already be established. You need to already be, you know, well established. Your foundation needs to be there so that when it comes that you'll be prepared to do what God has called you to do. No matter how difficult it seems, no matter how the, I, know, I mean, it, how big the challenge is, you know that if God is for you, who can be against you? And notice, even while Jesus was doing what he was supposed to do, did y'all notice that the angels came and gave him strength? They gave him strength in the midst of what he was doing, in the midst of his agony. And if you ever want God to strengthen you, you've got to get busy doing what God has called you to do. You don't need strength if all you're going to do is sleep. You don't need any, any energy. You don't need anybody to strengthen you if you made up in your mind that all you're going to do is sleep. And we're sleeping too much on what God has for us. We will allow everything that's going on in the world to stop us from carrying out the purpose that God has for us in our life. I don't care if you're in the midst of an epidemic, pandemic, um, whatever kind of demic you could think of. It doesn't emotional, you know, schism and whatever you're going through. It doesn't really matter what it is. You need to understand when I keep my mind stayed on Jesus, stayed on the Lord, he will keep me in perfect peace. That's why you can go through what you're going through and still maintain your faith. Still understand that God is for you. Still not back up. Still not settle. Still not give in. Still not turn around because God is for you. And when God is for you, who can be against you? You're going to face things in life that are difficult, but they're necessary. And I ain't telling you it's going to be easy just like Jesus did. He prayed. He knew he was facing something that was difficult, but he also understood that this thing is necessary. It's necessary. You're going to face some things in life that are difficult, but they are certainly going to be necessary. Listen, I wrote this down. Uh, we like to do that which is easy and what we've already defeated. We like to do that which is easy and which we which we have already defeated but 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 what happens when you get defeated what happens when you face a challenge that knocks you out what happens what happens what what happens when 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 you were always winning and then you end up being defeated what what happens then how how do you respond how do you respond when you when you go through some stuff and it seems like, you know, I've been winning all this time, but then you go through something that, that knocks you on your butt, knocks you flat out, and you're, you're, you're saying to yourself, how in the world am I going to make it through this? And you know when you get used to winning, losing is hard. Being defeated is hard when you get used to winning and you're always winning. And, and, and how is it? How is it that, that, that as soon as you begin, as soon as something happens and it knocks you on your butt and you, you wonder why, you wonder how, and, and it's difficult for people who are always used to winning at everything to get knocked on their butts and not understand that I got knocked down so that I can get up. Come on, I'm, I'm talking to somebody right now. I got knocked down so that I could get better. 
I got knocked down because I got so used to being and doing things the way that I wanted to do them and when I wanted to do them and, and not understanding. I forgot all about God and all of this stuff. I got so high and mighty. I got, as my pastor says, I got so such a much that I forgot about God. I thought I was winning on my own. I thought that I was doing all of this of my own accord, of my own strength. And then, you know, I start, I stopped praying like I used to pray. I stopped worshiping like I used to worship. I stopped, I stopped tapping into the word of God like I used to. I stopped studying my word like I used to. My faith began to wane a little bit. I got conceited. I got stuck up. I thought it was all about me. And then I faced a challenge and I got knocked down on my butt. And if you anything like David, y'all remember David, when he was, he and his men, when he was out fighting and they came back to Ziglag and Ziglag had been burned and their wives and their children were gone and they cried until they had no more tears. They went through something and they were used to winning and they went through something, but the whole thing they were going through, God brought them out with more than what they thought that they had lost because when, when David inquired of the Lord and said, shall I pursue this host, this company? God said, pursue. And, and David came to a point in his life, watch this, just like Jesus, I need you to understand this, when nobody else was around, what did David do? David encouraged himself in the Lord. I, I got to tell some of y'all right now that are on this line right now, it may look like you're going through some stuff that's knocking you down and knocking you flat on your butt. God is refocusing you. God is, God is refocusing you. You're being refocused. I want you to think about this. You're being refocused. You, 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 you're getting your energy back. You're getting your strength back. You're realizing that I, this ain't just about me. This is the plan of God for my life. And I can't do this without God. I can't do this without God. You got to take the autopilot off. You got to stop just, you know, it, it just blase, blase, just going through life. And watch this. If 2020 hadn't taught you nothing else, 2020 ought to, ought, to, ought to help everybody to be able to see better, to be able to see what's necessary in life. Get rid of the fluff, get rid of the junk and refocus your attention back on God. Refocus your attention back on God. It, it, it should teach us that, that there are things in life that are important. And those are the things that we need to be concentrating on. What, what's the purpose and the plan and the will of God for my life? Those are the things that I need to be concentrating on. We, we, we allow so much stuff to come in. And I'm not saying that, that God uses pandemic to do that, but I'm saying this is one of the lessons that I learned out of this pandemic. You've got to refocus, refocus. You got to get back to your purpose in life. We've allowed so much stuff in the trappings of life to come in and we don't understand. We, we've not come to the place for, and where we realize that there are some things that are important that we need to be doing. We need to be about our father's business. We need to get back to what we were doing when we first were walking in the blessings, when we were first trusting in God for everything, when we weren't making a move without consulting God. Now, you know, we think that we got the strength. We got the power. We could do it all on our own. That's God's strength and power working within us that allows us to do what we do. Without him, we can do nothing. We can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without him. Go to James chapter number one, verse two and three. James chapter number one, verse two and three, because, you know, we become uh, in, in, in life, you know, what, as soon as, as soon as we're facing uh, the, the little small things in life, the, the little trivial things in life, we fall apart. We, we tend to want to fall apart. We, we Here we go. Woe is me. You know, ain't nobody going through this but me. Ain't nobody ever had to do this but me. I'm telling you right now, you lying to yourself. You lying to yourself. There's nothing that's not, not happening to you that is not common to man. Somebody else is going through the same thing you're going through. Somebody else is experiencing the same thing you're experiencing. Somebody else is going through it. James chapter number one, uh, verse two and three. Um, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, different temptations, when you go through different things in life, when you're facing different challenges. And the reason why you should count this all joy is because you're not going to keep on going through the same thing over and over. When I'm going through different things, that means that I'm, I'm learning from the things that I've gone through. <sighs> come on, come on. 
Come on, work with me here. Come on, let's get this. That means that when I'm going through different things, that means I'm learning from the old thing. I'm, I don't continue to go through the same thing over and over and over again. This is different. This is a this is a different thing. This is this is something that I've never experienced before. And if God brought me through that last thing, certainly God is going to bring me through this thing. Ah, uh, come on. It, it, and it, verse number three says, "Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience." I got to go on to number four, but let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Listen, all of this stuff that you're going through, these different things that you're going through, you should already have the faith to get through it. You need to patiently wait on the Lord. We have confidence in God that when we put our trust in his word, we're going to come through whatever it is we're facing. We have this confidence in God. And when we get through, when we go through this thing, we ain't going to be wanting nothing. Let, let, listen, you wouldn't put a cake in the oven and then take it out before it's done. I, I don't know if they still do this. It's been a long time since I've been around the cake. But, but you know, you, you wouldn't put a cake in the oven and take it out before it's done because then it'll collapse. As a matter of fact, back in the old days, I don't know, you know, all this newfangled technology. I know back in the old days, you know, they, they didn't want you walking around the oven. You couldn't, you know, you can't be, you couldn't go over there and be opening the oven up and letting the heat escape because they needed that consistent temperature so that they could get that consistent take cake coming out of that oven. You need, you, you need, listen, you may be looking at these things a little bit different, but, but God is consistent. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is consistent and God knows what it takes. That's why when you, when you're sometimes crying, God, take me out, take me out. God is saying, be patient, my child, because when you come out of this thing, you're coming out of this thing with a shout, with a scream, with a testimony. You're coming out of this thing with the glory of God all over you. When you come out, you're going to be wanting nothing. When you come out of this thing, everything will be well done. Everything will be well done. I, I remember when my mama Dorothy used to make them pound cakes. And, and I used to be sitting at that table patiently waiting, patiently waiting on that cake to come out. And, and we always had a pound cake on the table. We always, I said we, we always had a pound cake on the table. But I used to love when I was there when they were first coming out of the oven. And she used to always say, baby, wait on it to cool down some. I'd say, uh-uh, Mama Dorothy. I, I, if we could cut, let, let it cool down enough to be cut. But as soon as it's done, I want a taste of it. I want a taste of it. Watch this. As soon as you get through whatever it is you're going through and you get the taste of the goodness of God, come on. Maybe bitter in my mouth, but it's sweet in my belly. Come on, somebody. You, you may not under, really understand everything that God is doing for you in your life. I need you to understand this morning that God is working some stuff out on your behalf. It may be difficult, but it's necessary. You may not want to do it, but it's necessary. If God told you to do it, then it's time for you to do it. It's time for you to, to, to take back your life. It's time for you to take back the reins of your life. It's time for you to move, to advance. It's time. I, I, I said this on Wednesday night. For some of y'all, it's time for the next level. It, it's time for you to go. It's time. It is time for the next level. It is time for the next level. Go to John 16 to 33, and I got to hurry up. Oh, my God. My time is up. I'm going over today. If you can hang in there, hang in there. John 16 and 33. John 16 and 33. Come on, go there. Go there. Go there. Let's, let's, let me see if I can get there real fast. Real fast. Real fast. John 16, verse number 33. Come on. Come on. Flip over for me, Bible. There you go. Work, in, work your thing, Bible. Come on. There we go. Uh, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you should have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Think about this. No matter what I'm going through out here in the world, the Lord says I've over, already overcome it. So guess what? It can't destroy me. If Jesus has already overcome it, whatever I'm facing cannot destroy me. Why? Because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. And if Jesus told me he has already overcome it, baby, I'm getting through this. I am going to overcome this. This thing will not have victory over me. I am going to defeat anything that I'm facing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to defeat it. I'm going to defeat it. 
I'm going to defeat it. You will have trouble. You will have tribulations. You will have trial, but don't worry about it. Jesus said, I've already overcome them. In other words, I've already defeated them. Go on and go through this thing. Go on and go through this thing. Oh man, come on. I I, I can't finish it all today, uh, but I'm going to try and finish it all. Uh, probably, uh, I'm going to throw a little bit of this in there Sunday, but I, I got to go through this one. Go to, go to 2 Corinthians chapter number four, and I'm going to be in the Message Bible. 2 Corinthians four. I'm going to read this to you from the Message Bible. I want to put this in your hearing uh, before I get off the line. Uh, I want to put this in your ears before I get off. Uh, this right here, I, I, I got to get you this one. Message Bible. I think I'm starting. Uh, I, I got to see when I get there. I want to start at verse number seven, but I'm in the message and it may read. Oh, yeah, it starts at verse number seven. Watch this. Watch this. I want y'all to get this. Clear my throat. Mm hmm. Second Corinthians chapter number four. And I'm reading from the message Bible. And it reads as thus. If you look at us, you might, you might well miss the brightness we carry. I mean, miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in these undoing clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much chance of that. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus' sake, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on our best. I may be going through some stuff. I may, listen, things may be going on that you think, oh my God, look, look at him. He ain't going to make it out of this. I made it out of my last trial and challenge and tribulation. I made it through my last situation. I made it through that last thing that you thought was going to take me out. I've been down before, but I got up. Yea, though a righteous man fall, fall, he gets up. He keeps on getting up. I've been through some stuff, but I'm still here. I've been through some things that even I thought were going to take me out, but I realized that he had already overcome it. When I began to encourage myself, that's when I realized there's a praise that's coming out of this, this situation. There's a testimony that's coming out of this thing that I'm going through. There's glory that's going to be revealed in my life because of what I've gone through. Somebody is about to be blessed because I went through what I went through. It was difficult, but it was necessary. Every challenge that I face is difficult, but it's necessary. And the one thing that I know that he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. And if God be for you, who can be against you? No matter what I go through, there's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. No, no challenge, no nothing, no person, no, no situation. There's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. And if I cannot be separated from the love of God, watch this. He and I, I abide in him. I told y'all Wednesday night, we remain as one. And if he's never been defeated, I'll never be defeated. Come on, somebody. As long as I remain in him, I'll never be defeated. I'll never be defeated. As the songwriter said, he's never lost a battle and he never will. He, he, he has never lost a battle and he never will. He will never lose. And when I remain in him, I never lose. I never lose. I may go through some things, but I don't lose. I may face some situations, but I never lose. It may look like, you know, this one right here is going to get him, but it never gets me. It may look like, listen, I'm, I'm talking to you. It may look like, you know, you're going down for the last time, but he'll pull you up. The Bible says he'll lift you up out of, my, out of the miry muck and clay. He will lift you up. God will bring you to a place of prominence. He'll bring you to a place of preeminence. He'll bring you to a place of power. He'll bring you to a place of glory. All you got to do is remain. Come on, you're going through some things that are difficult, but they're necessary. Whatever it is you're facing, whatever challenge it is you're facing, if God brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. Just think about it. Just think about it. Come on, come on. He lives in us. 
He lives in us. You can do it. You can do it. Encourage yourself. Be like David. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. I don't care if ain't nobody else in your cheering section. Ain't nobody else in the stands. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Be of good cheer. Y'all have a great day. Come on, encourage yourself today. God bless you all. Y'all be great.